The evaporation of liquids, especially water, is an important process in our nature. Evaporation can be explained very easily with the pot-in-pot -pot refrigerator. First, we need a large clay pot. Some sand is added to the pot so that the pot's bottom is covered with sand. Then we put a slightly smaller pot into the clay pot. The small pot should be a few inches smaller than the clay pot so that there is enough space between the pots. Afterwards, we pour sand between the two pots. The sand is then moistened by carefully adding water to it. Finally, we put food into the pot and put a wet cloth over it. That way, we can keep the fruits fresh. Here, the magic begins. According to thermodynamics, the molecules in the water are energetically charged and therefore wiggle and jiggle around all the time. When they collide, they transfer energy from one molecule to the next. It's like a Newton's cradle in which one ball transfers its energy to the other. If the kinetic energy of a molecule is high enough, the molecule will overcome the forces of attraction of the neighboring molecules. Consequently, the molecule leaves the liquid as a result, the liquid becomes less because the molecules leave the liquid. Furthermore, the liquid becomes cooler because the molecules take their energy with them. This principle is at the heart of the pot-in-pot -pot refrigerator. The clay allows the molecules to escape through the fine pores. This cools the water and therefore the inner pot as well as the food contained in it. This works particularly well in dry air, as few water molecules can be found in dry air. You can see here that water molecules leave as well as enter the liquid. If the air possesses only a few water molecules, only some of them can get into the liquid. In the case of high humidity, the evaporation is therefore low and is practically no longer present when emitted and absorbed molecules are in balance.